Um, this is one of our first projects that we're doing live uh, demos and trying to teach capacity building for open farm days. So today's project is Honey Floss and we have Chef Andrea Harling here. Um, we're going to switch over to some live kitchen parts, um, but I'm going to run through the recipe and what we're developing today and we will also have lots of time for q a so please uh feel free to put your comments into the into the chat function and we'll get there all right so a little bit about what we're doing uh, the food incubator program that we've developed with open farm days this is now our seventh project um, so exciting for us to be working on this and we're looking at projects that um, can add value to your farm, something that you might be able to do yourselves. Um, and this particular one is one that has um, some fun energy behind it. So if you've got kids up on your farm for open farm days, I think this is a, a really neat project. Um, what's really interesting about this too, um, once we get to some of the costing on it, it is a, a low cost um, after you have all your initial equipment. Um, so it's something that you can kind of offer, offer that's fun and and really approachable um, what's unique about this product that we're doing uh, the honey floss is that it, it's something that really doesn't exist right now and andrea chef andrea has gone through and developed a recipe for us that allows us to play with this fabulous ingredient and and have a lot of fun with it um, one of the reasons we selected honey for this year is um, this is our 10th year for open farm days and we had a lot of conversation about how do we celebrate our 10th year and that hive mentality of it takes it takes a group of people it takes a hive to make something happen and we just thought this was you know a great project to work on as as part of that all right sorry i'm not on my own computer oh no it's not All right, let's try that. All right. There we go. Um, so what you're going to find with this one, and we'll walk through the recipe quickly. Um, there's not a lot of ingredients that you need for this. You need honey, sugar, corn syrup, and water. So it's basically four simple ingredients. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. The materials that you need to actually create it, um, most of these you may have yourself already, but you need a bowl, a pot, a burner, candy thermometer, a baking tray a Vitamix or, a, or some form of blender. Um, and then the last one is the cotton candy machine, which is probably something that you may not have. Um, there is a buying guide for this. Uh, these, the, the candy floss machines can run anywhere from sort of $50 up to about 800. But for the ones that are down at that $50 price point, um, the quality isn't really there. Uh, so you'll see in our buying guide that, that those ones that range in that 250 to 400 is probably what what will work best for you all right um, our process basically there's a five parts here and we're going to go live to the kitchen um, but you start and you set up an ice water bath um, before you get going and into a pot with a burner you add your sugar your corn syrup your honey and your water and you bring that up to a boil and it's about 40 minutes so it takes a little bit of time to do this um, and you've got to be super cautious with this. Obviously, you want to make sure you don't get any on yourself because that'll really burn. Um, and this is probably just the most technically it's it's simple, but it's you know it's an important stage, but it takes a long time. So that 40 minutes is that rapid boil part. Um, after you're done, you pour it out into a pan to let it uh, harden. And the reason you're doing this is we are going to then take it and then grind it. And to get it to that stage, um, you have to get it to that hard crack stage. When we take a look at this slide here, you can kind of see the first one, it's been poured out onto the pan um, and you pour it out there, you let it cool, and then you get it to the point where it's at that crack stage. So if it's not really, really hard, what's going to happen when it goes into your Vitamix or your blender, um, it's going to get all gummy. So if you want it to get to that powdery stage, you have to make sure it's really, really um, hard. And if it's not, then just leave it longer and let it dry. And then it turns into the image that you've got on that bottom corner right there. Um, we're going to take a look at a couple of different candy floss machines and I'll throw it to the kitchen in just a second. But the um, basically you take your powder and it goes into that center part, as you can see with um, where it's being poured. And, and and really, I mean, then then you're making your candy floss. 
the production for each candy floss is a little bit different. Um, so the larger the machine, the more commercial it is, the more floss is going to produce at a rapid rate. And there is also some downtime. You can run these machines for, for about an hour um, and then you need some cool down time. So there's usually about a 15 minute cool down. So each machine will be a little bit different um, and you'll want to kind of address that based on your machine. What we're doing um, for our little project here is we're doing these three inch balls. Um, they're kind of fun, but uh, Andrea is going to show us how to put them on a cone and we're going to take a look at a bunch of different packaging options uh, in just a couple of minutes, but I am going to toss it over to the kitchen after this last slide. Um, and this is something that's going to come out. Uh, we've got some recipes also um, for some cocktails and for some fun stuff that we're going to be working with for Open Farm Days um, called the Bee's Knees is one of our cocktails and we've got another one as well. And each of you that are on this call today will also receive a box of the products. So you're going to see what we've created here today and it'll give you a chance to try it as well. Um, and that'll be probably in a couple of weeks time that it'll come out. Um, so, so I think right now we're gonna toss it over to the kitchen and uh, to Chef Andrea. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Andrea and uh, I'm very excited about this project. Um, so you guys have all seen the recipe. So let me just kind of quickly start by uh, explaining what we're doing here. Um, we have all our ingredients that we all weighed out. And as well as we've got all of our utensils and equipment, uh, as well as a, a bowl filled with some ice. Uh, as at the moment, it's just water, but it would be ice. Um, you do that so you're able to test out the candy as it's being made, making sure it's to the right stage, as well as to be able to uh, stop the process of cooking when you get to that to get to that level. So first things first is we add all of our ingredients to the pot. Um, the, the fun part about this that I've had a lot of fun with is that uh, I was able to experiment with a whole bunch of different sort of um, flavors and see how we can infuse a bunch of different flavors into it. So we take a whole bunch of different uh, local Alberta berries, dehydrated them, ground them down, um, and made it sort of a powder. And with that powder, we were able to flavor um, the, the honey floss that we were making. Um, I tested out a whole bunch of different ones. I did like local lavender and uh, all a whole bunch of different things. There's, it's, it's like endless what you could do. Um, the only thing, the trick that I found was that with the water that you are gonna add into the syrup or into the candy is you would bloom the flavor into the water to get the flavor and the color into it. Um, I didn't have that in the recipe yet, so uh, that was uh, as I was testing out and, and to improve it. That's uh, a little trick that I found there. So, um, so yeah, very very simple: sugar, honey. Um, there's a few options. We uh, we can use corn syrup. You can either use like the lily white, the the light stuff, or you can use a darker corn syrup, um, or you can use something called a glucose powder. So this specifically is a uh, glucose. Um, it just has to do with um, the the reason being is. Sugar crystallizes and honey crystallizes very easily as you cook it, and it, it all uh, cooks out at different stages and different temperatures. So making sure that it's sort of foolproof and easier to produce. Um, tried to do it with just honey, it didn't work. Tried to do it with just sugar, adding more honey, didn't work. It's just trial and error. So I found the best recipe was making sure to use some um, glucose or corn syrup in it. Uh, it makes it honestly foolproof because it stabilizes it and it stops the crystallization. So. Um, Crystallization is when any sort of sediment or residue gets into the caramel as it's cooking out. Um, it usually drips down the side of the pan and causes uh, little particles to get into it. And all of a sudden now your beautiful candy has now crystallized and it's garbage. So a trick to stop that from happening is take a little brush and a little bit of lemon water, just squeeze a lemon into it, a little bit of lemon water, and then you're just gonna brush the edges of your pot before you put anything into it. And all that's doing is it's just getting rid of all the extra stuff that's potentially gonna contaminate and cause that crystallization. So um, once you've done that, turn your pot on and start adding all of your ingredients. So equal parts sugar to honey. Is that goes in. It's a little bit cold in here, so it uh, might take me a little bit to get this in, but uh, your honey would then go in as well as your liquid. So this is, uh, the berry water. So I've infused the water with the berry powder and then the glucose will be added in. So same sort of thing. It's a little bit cooler in here. So it's a little sticky. As you guys know, honey is very sticky. That's sugar. 
um, as you, once you've added it all in, it's very simple. You turn on the, the pot. Uh, after this right now, I'm using an induction burner. So it runs at about 1200 watts and it takes about 40 minutes at that temperature. Um, I would suggest if you're doing it on a regular stove, it'll probably take you about between 40 and 45 minutes, um, all depending. And the biggest thing is when you turn it on, don't, don't turn it up really high, but turn it up to like a medium high, bring it to a boil. Once it starts boiling, the sugar starts to dissolve. That's when you're stirring it. Then you remove your, your uh, spatula out of it and you add your candy thermometer. Um, obviously for timing's sake, I'm not gonna be able to show you the whole process that, as it cooks out. So candy thermometer goes in. It, as it goes, the temperature will slowly rise. It sits around the 280 to 300 for majority of the time. And then that's where you have to really watch it where you get to that point where it's it's kind of kind of sticky. So um, it boils and bubbles and smells delicious. Um, when it gets to that, just at the 310, you wanna take your, a spoon with your ice water and you're gonna dip it into your liquid and you're gonna take some and into the water, the ice bath. Then you'll be able to tell. If you can pick it up and it is hard and pliable or not pliable, it is ready to go. So if that's the case, take your pot right off the stove and put the whole pot right into the water to stop the process. Um, that's just gonna, I mean, we're talking it's cooking at, you know, 310 degrees. So it's, it's hot um, and, and sticky and it keeps continuing to cook. So it stops the process. From there, once you've cooled it down a little bit, this is the tricky part, don't cool it too much or you won't get it out of the pot. You will then take your cooled liquid and pour it onto um, a baking tray. Uh, lined with parchment paper. This is where, um, this was done yesterday, so it's a little bit sticky because of all the moisture in the air right now. Um, once it sits for about half an hour, it is generally perfect if you've taken it to that proper hard crack stage at 310, um, and you should have no issues with it. Um, really easy way to kind of, from that stage, is let it sit, let it cure. If there's moisture in there, actually put a, a bag over it or some saran wrap uh, to stop any moisture. We generally have no issues with this here in Alberta because it's so dry. Um, this week is just a little bit tough for us here. So um, from that stage, once it's sat, you will then crack it. You can do it however you like. It's easy. You can literally crack it. You can smash it. You can put another tray on top and hit it. Um, it breaks up pretty easily. The reason is, is you don't want massive chunks going into your food processor um, just because it'll beat it up a little bit. So break the pieces down, make them a little more manageable. Um, like that size would be great. If they're a little bit bigger, then that's okay. If you have a more industrial uh, food processor, it shouldn't be a problem. It can intake and no problem. And uh, uh, a Vitamix actually does the best job out of all of them. Um, what I did find was because of the moisture in the air, you could probably see here the top of that's already, already started, like got moisture in it from just me opening it being here. Um, but this was kind of a thing for me. I love to save this because once we, I grind it all down, I push it through a fine mesh sieve or a strainer just to get out the big chunks. And then you get this nice, beautiful um, honey sugar is really what it is. Um, it's delicious. So uh, the pieces that I couldn't get through um, and my food processor wouldn't blend up, I was saving and I was using it in my coffee and it's delicious. <laughs> so little added perk, perk to that too, something else you could do with it. Uh, it's sort of like the turbinado sugar, or the, the big chunky sugar that they sell. Um, okay, from that stage, <laughs> you move on to the cotton candy machine. So this has been a, an interesting, I started with a little smaller home one, um, did a whole bunch of tests. It was really great. We could come up with these really great little balls that were so fun. You could do them on sticks. Um, so, so fun and delicious. Then the machine broke. So word of advice is don't buy a cheap machine. <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, I also found in the cheaper machine, uh, a bit of an issue I had was that it wouldn't spin as much. So the floss was very stringy and uh, not, it wasn't as good. Um, and it burned really easily. So um, that was another thing I should touch back on. When adding flavors to the sugar, um, I tried even just adding the berry powder into the sugar and putting it into the machine. Same thing. Um, the cotton candy machines run 320 degrees. And what happens is the, the turbine in the middle gets so hot that when you put the sugar in, it's spinning, it whips the sugar out, and by the time it hits the air, it cools. So that's way too hot for this. Um, so for almost any flavor it's putting into it, I even tested out putting some arrowroot powder into it to see if I could stop the caking and the dry, like to help it dry. Same thing, burnt in the machine. So um, trying to keep any flavors or anything like that right into the sugar process when you make the candy, um, the first candy. It 
stops that burning process. So, um, okay, cotton candy machines. I heard Tim is talking about it a little bit earlier. So each cotton candy machine is different. They're very loud when they run. So um, this is a big commercial one that I've rented. It, it's very simple to use. Uh, it's fast, so it makes a lot of cotton candy very quickly. Um, there's a couple of different switches, a side switch where you just turn the power on. This bar has to be down. And when you're ready, you turn the candy switch on. And what happens is um, this will start to spin. So before we get to that point, we're gonna add our, our, our uh, sugar to it. So you wanna add um, about 90% of the, of, of the turbine filled to the top. Sorry, just not. Spilling and it don't usually spill. So yeah, about 90%, trying to be a little bit neater than I am here. I'm gonna wear a glove because uh, I'm not an expert at this yet. So as I go to turn this on, um, you turn it on once, once everything is into it. So it's gonna get loud for a few minutes. Uh, I'm gonna try and roll you a, a cone. I've never rolled one, so be patient with me because it's not as easy as it looks. Um, okay, so here we go. It's not very true, but we get the idea. Um, the thing is, is that it can take practice. So um, lots of different options. If you're producing large amounts, you can just spin it and pull it out so you have the large switch pieces, and you're able to do a whole bunch of different things with it. So you can roll them into six smaller balls, roll them into like logs. Um, there's a whole bunch of different options that they they do packaging and it's got a few samples to show you different things to see. So um, I do apologize for my first cone, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. It takes a minute to Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll cool down in one minute. All right, so we're gonna talk about um, some packaging options for you. And just so you've got an idea, uh, I think we'll move away from the machine. Oh, there we go. We're good now. Um, so the packaging is is interesting for this. Um, we're going to show you a couple of different ones. This is probably something that you're familiar with. These are the typical ones that you'd find at a fair. Um, the thing about these ones is they will last, the cotton candy will last about three to five days in something like this because they're very, very thin. Um, mylar packaging. So those are the different ones that have uh, their barrier packaging. Um, and that'll be in the buying guide as well. Those ones, uh, the product can actually last up to a year. And here's a couple of other options. Um, you can take a look at any sort of container, any plastic container that seals. Um, and you'll often find these now with stores and these types of sealed containers. Here's a fun little one that just has a pull off top that you can see. Um, so these ones in a sealed container, in a mylar bag or something like that, they can last really a year. Um, so you've got a lot of longevity. This one is a sealed plastic bag. So the bag is a little bit heavier um, than something like this, which is quite flimsy, but this is not a barrier bag. So your shelf life on something like this isn't quite as long um, and you're a little bit more susceptible to the, um, to the weather. What's interesting about these ones is anytime you package something in, in, a, in a plastic container, you aren't worried about um, 
the, the product getting crushed. So something like this, obviously, it can easily be flattened and wrecked so it doesn't have the same sort of shelf life. Just strictly one because of the barrier method, but also because of the fact that it doesn't protect it. So these ones are kind of ideal. Um, and there's a buying guide that talks about U-line in different places that you can get all different types of, of uh, plastic packaging for that. Um, so we're going to switch over and take a quick look at the recipe, the costing, and the um, and the buying guide, and then we'll get to any questions that you may have. Me again. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen so you can see um, this. Oh, there we go. All right, um, so all of you will receive this package right after it'll have the PowerPoint presentation we will also have this video. Um, but there is also a spreadsheet and has three tabs on it, so this first one um, talks a little bit about all the ingredients and it does the step by step by step. Um, method for it, our second tab here is the costing and you'll see actually how cost effective something like this is. Oh okay sorry um, we're not gonna be able to shift over but you're gonna see that really your production costs per kilogram are, it's very, very low. So you're in the neighborhood of five, five to $6 for a kilogram. Um, so your costs are, are really small. Your biggest cost for this is um, really just getting the machine. And the buying guide, um, what you're going to find is there's um, but six different models that we've done some research on that we've made some recommendations that are available for purchase through Amazon or through Home Depot. Um, so take a look at some of the different options for you. The one that we have there is a commercial one. These ones can also be rented um, and rental fees for these things are usually not too expensive. So you can try and test out a commercial one, uh, perhaps for a weekend if you'd like to uh, play around with it. But I think they're, they're a whole lot of fun. And I think it's a project that you guys will have some, some fun with. And the berry ones, um, I wish you could smell it. Um, just the room here, as soon as the honey starts to spin is you just smell this amazing aroma of honey. And the taste is so different from traditional cotton candy. It is just, it has this amazing flavor to it. So it's a lot of fun to play with. And as you start to play with different berry powders, um, really you can kind of make something unique on your own. Um, so I'm going to head over and see if we've got any questions. Um, and we've got Andrea on standby for anything that we've got there. And it doesn't look like no, no questions. questions. It was easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, th really, this takes us to the end of it. Um, oh, here we've got Is that flowers. Have you tried uh, flowers? flowers. <laughs> you know what? That's a great question. Um, let me go and ask Andrea how we might integrate something like that. Hmm. Stay tuned. I will be here to look good because I don't have any questions. <laughs> I, don't, I can't answer these questions. Um, what was the question? Sorry, Lisa. Could you integrate flowers? Oh, yeah, yeah, you definitely could. Um, you know, probably the same, same sort of process would be blooming the, the flavor of it into, into your liquid. Um, it, that's the thing with, with water and anything fragrant, you can definitely, if you heated your water up a little bit, added your, your flowers to it, um, let it seep a little bit overnight, strain it out the next morning, and then you'll have those flowers into, you'll have that flavor right into your water. Um, yeah, you can definitely, like I said, this is so versatile, you could probably add almost anything to it, really. Get the berries. So next question. Is, Sorry, next question. Where do you get the berry powders? Ah, so the berry powders, um, Andrea uh, took the berries and dehydrated them. Um, so they were made using that. You could also put them in the oven and dry them out and then grind them up and put them into a powder. Um, so you can make your own powder, essentially. Um, garlic powder. <laughs> Um, test it. I, I don't know. <laughs> Cotton garlic. I, I, you could probably play around with it and, and see what the options are. Um, Andrea, do you have any thoughts on that? 
you, you can definitely do it. You know, it would be kind of fun, actually. You could, you could make a honey garlic sugar. Um, and yeah, if it was good, you could spin it into some floss. If, if it wasn't good, you could do it for cooking. You could use it for, for cooking too, right? Like this is the thing. It's so versatile. You don't even have to spin it. You could make it that sort of thick turbinado sugar that you could season things with, um, sell it as seasoning sweeteners. And um, yeah, there's so many options. Yeah, you could you could do it. I don't, maybe if you were getting in the stampede grounds, you could sell it as one of their weird new foods. <laughs> All right, Andrea, we've got another question. Um, uh, do you need to dehydrate the berries or can liquid be used? Could you pour the actual liquid into your water? Yep, you definitely could. Um, these for us was, I was thinking more of a shelf stable thing where you're able to dehydrate berries and do all of that. But yes, for sure you could. Um, you could even, instead of using water, you could use just pure, um, the pure berry liquid. Yeah, just make sure there's no, no chunks in it really. So just make sure it's strained out and, and pure liquid. It would add a ton more flavor and right. color. So Andrea, based on the, the quantity that you were demoing, that you were showing, um, so how, how much cotton candy would that make? So one of these, um, okay, so one full recipe, which was a kilo of honey, a kilo of sugar, um, 500 grams of corn syrup, and then the seasoning that you put in with the water works out to about two, I would say about two and a half uh, kilos of powder. Um, you can easily um, spin, so, Generally, it's almost exactly the same from the, the sugar that goes in is the weight that comes out. So if you put in 100 grams into it, you'll get 100 grams out of it. Um, so if this is two, two kilos, you'd get two kilos worth of floss out of it. Really, there's no loss in it, which is kind of nice, too. I don't know if that answered that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes it makes just massive volumes of it. It's it's intriguing to watch. Um, so Andrea, if you blend the fruit in the Vitamix to liquefy, and then um, you could then boil it into the syrup, is that correct? Yep, you could just do it. Yeah, you could just do it as a syrup. And you know that would, you might have to tweak the recipe a little bit, but I'm pretty confident it would it would work almost exactly the same. Even if your berries are frozen, and you literally just take it's like strain the liquid off and use the frozen like liquid from it as it thaws out, that would work too. Then it's no no work involved in that. All right, great. And we've got a question on pricing and, you know, that I almost put back out to you, to you guys as host farms. Um, the cotton candy, it's going to depend on, you know, the containers that you're using. It's going to depend on how large it is. Um, your, your cost really for a cone is, is pennies. Um, you'll see it in the costing guide, um, but your, your packaging will be the biggest price of that part of it. Um, and the packaging, if you're looking at a, like a cone in a bag, you're looking at somewhere around 10 cents. Um, if you're looking at a mylar bag, you're probably looking at about 25 cents. And if you're looking at a plastic container, um, depending on the size, if it's a liter or more, you're probably looking at about a dollar. Um, but the, the, the actual cost of the cotton candy becomes the pennies. Um, so really, it's, it's just a question of figuring out what you want to charge for it. We are doing kind of small balls and we're keeping it kind of fun and doing it a little differently. Um, uh, there was a question about the color. Um, yes, when you're using the berries, it will color the candy floss. Um, so the more berries that you use, the darker, the richer the color, which is really fun because then you've got the pinks and the purples for the candy floss um, that we're looking at. And it's probably hard for you to tell here, um, but a sugar creates just that white um, puff. Um, but because we're using all the honey, um, we've got this beautiful little sort of golden shade. So it's probably hard for you to tell just through the camera, um, but it is, is just a lovely little golden um, shade. So how many grams of cotton candy are in that thicker plastic bag that you showed? Um, Rhiannon or Andrea, can you uh, pick up how many grams that bag is? Yep, this is 80 grams. Okay. How many grams would a cone be? Um, and the cone, yeah, we can we can probably weigh it if we've got a kitchen scale here. But do you know any guess on how many grams that cone is? Uh, that cone that I spun, I would say, would be about sorry, would be about probably sixty grams. Okay, wonderful. Um, for machine rentals, um, there's a lot of party rental places that are 
kind of all over the place. Um, Jennifer, I can send you a, a number of links to some different places. Um, so no problem about that. All right. Thank you. It is very fun. <laughs> it is. It is so fun. Um, what, what I will say that we're the most excited about is honey floss doesn't exist and now it does. So it's such a wonderful celebration of honey. Um, we know it's just it's all over Alberta and so many of you have it. And then all with the you picks and the berries out there. Um, this can be something that I think we can really champion and have a lot of fun with. Um, so you'll get the buying guides, you'll have the costing charts, you've got the recipes, you'll have the video, um, and Andrea is here to help us with any questions. If you guys have any questions, just fire them my way, and we can absolutely kind of share it with everybody who's here. We can share any of the questions that are being asked and kind of keep that circulating, and um, we can play with some other flavors as well, and the, the garlic thing, you got me intrigued a little bit, so... <laughs> All right. I do have something to mention okay. about the marketing of this. So this was created because it's our as Tana says, it's our 10th anniversary and we wanted to create something special and you know it takes a hive. So um, but what we're gonna do in marketing is that we're gonna let you guys try it first. And we're not going to really market it until probably mid July. So this is a really good time if you want to test it, if you want to play around with the recipes. And then if you're planning on uh, having this for your Open Farm Days event, it would be really helpful uh, to let us know if this is what you're planning on doing. And then I can include this as part of our press release. I can include this as part of our marketing as well, saying this: these are the farms that are having this fun product. And eventually the, the, we, will, we, will, we will have a blog. Uh, where we will let consumers make it if they want, but we want you guys to have first crack at it. Um, and, you know, maybe that's something we can release in September, but we would really like you guys to try it if you're, this is in your wheelhouse and, um, and then we'll be, uh, and then we'll move along so that everyone can get to try this. And yeah, Hascaps would be great. Yep. Wonderful. Um, I think that's it. Uh, we grow Hascaps. I'm thinking it'd be fantastic to try it. Yep. Uh, can you imagine the flavor and color? Yeah. Um, just so you know that the colors obviously are toned down. So even when you've got the berry stuff in it, 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 it doesn't go that sort of vibrant um, color. But the more that you add, obviously, the darker it'll go. All right. Um, so yes, so just as a reminder, everything will come out to everybody who's registered here. You'll get the recipes, you'll have the video, the costing guides, the buying charts. And I think everyone has my email. So if you've got questions about any of this, just fire them off to me. Um, and if you've got questions for uh, Andrea as well, um, I can happily field those as well. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining and I uh, hope you have a lot of fun playing with uh, some honey floss. And, um, and we will be sending each of you out also a package. So we'll just, um, we'll make sure we've got everybody's contact here. And um, it'll be probably two to three weeks for it to get to you, but um, that's, you sh we should have it shortly. Okay, great. Thanks everybody.